Hi there. It's time for some stories with me, Mrs. Ferris, and my friend Bernard. And let's get started with, well, a counting one. This is actually called Nightgown Countdown. This is written by Frank B. Edwards and illustrated by Don John Biacci. And it is published by, Ooh, let me see here. Hmm. Isn't this an interesting publisher? Pokeweed Press. 10 farm animals dancing in a line. Horse got dizzy. So then there were nine. Nine farm animals prancing past the gate. Pig felt tired. So then there were eight. Eight farm animals clattering close to heaven. Do you see them up on the roof? Sheep slipped and fell. Whoops! And then there were seven. Seven farm animals getting lots of kicks. Dog lay down. And then there were six. Six farm animals hopping around the hive. Goat bumped a bee. Uh-oh. And then there were five. Five farm animals bouncing on the floor. Cow made a hole. Uh-oh. So then there were four. Four farm animals climbing up a tree. Cat went too far. So then there were three. Three farm animals stepped around some poo. Rat slipped and fell. Ooh. And then there were two. Two farm animals waiting for the sun. Hen fell asleep. So that left just one. One farm animal looking for his friends. Rooster woke them up. And they danced to the end. Well, let's do some dancing. Let's see, which farm animal should we choose? Maybe the rooster? Do you think the rooster would like to jump on a bed? I bet he might. I've got five silly roosters who are jumping on the bed. One fell off and oh, he bumped his head. Well, his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more roosters jumping on the bed. So four silly roosters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more roosters jumping on the bed. So three silly roosters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more roosters jumping on the bed. So two silly roosters were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more roosters jumping on the bed. So that leaves one, right? One silly rooster was jumping on the bed. When she fell off, well, she bumped her head. And that can't be a she, can it? Not if she's a rooster. So she must have been a hen. But anyway, mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more roosters or hens jumping on the bed. So let's have a story about a different kind of bird. This is about duck. It's called Duck at the Door and it's written and illustrated by Jackie Urbanovic. And there's a whole series of books about this duck. So if you like this one, come and check them out. It's a fun story. 
Well, it was a quiet night until thunk, creak, and someone's out there, said the cat. Let's go ask Irene. She always knows what to do. Irene, cried Becky, help. Somebody is knocking at the door. It's the middle of the night, said Irene. Who could be knocking on our door? It's Duck. Well, Irene brought the duck inside. My name is Max, he began. I was born in the spring and I loved it. I stayed behind when my flock flew south because I thought I'd love winter too. But it turned out to be cold and very lonely. Oh, winter isn't so bad when you have a warm home, said Irene. Well, at first, Max had a lot to learn. He didn't know about telephones or magazines or how to drink out of a glass. In January, he learned to use the remote control. He enjoyed Wild Kingdom and worldwide wrestling. In February, he discovered he had a flair for cooking. By March, he had made himself right at home. Do you see what he's doing? Irene is in the bathtub and he's diving in right off her head. But by April, it was clear that Max had learned too much. He hogged the remote, wouldn't let anyone else use it. Dakota, Coco, and Jessie Bear got tired of Max's new recipes. Tofu surprise, shish kebab a la Max, seaweed chowder, and Brody. Well, he was just plain tired. Someone had to talk to Max. But who? Well, just then, Max burst into the room yelling, Listen to the quacking! My flock has returned. I can't wait to see them. Irene, please keep my chef's hat. And Brody, you can have my rubber duckies. I will miss you so much, all of you. And after many hugs, Max left. Now with Max gone, life was ordinary again. The cats went back to eating plain cat food. No one played keep away with the remote control. And Brody, well, he didn't have to share his bed. Life was so quiet that by October, everyone was happy to hear the sound of quacking. And when there was a knock at the door, everyone was hoping the same thing. Can you guess what they're hoping? Is it Max? 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 Max! They all shouted with joy. Are you staying with us all winter? They asked. Yes, said Max. Me? And my flock. Everyone looked at Irene, hoping she would say something. It's a lot of ducks. But all she could say was, welcome home. Irene was pretty nice. Well, let's have our five fingers this time be little ducks, like Max. Five little ducks went swimming one day over the hills and far away. The mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only four little ducks came back. Four little ducks went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only three little ducks came back. Three little ducks went swimming one day over the hills and far away. 
Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. But only one little duck came back. One little duck went swimming one day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. But none of the five little ducks came back. So the sad mother duck went out that day over the hills and far away. Mama duck said, quack, 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 quack. And all of the five little ducks came back. And Mama was so happy to see them, she gave each one of them a great big kiss. And the little ducks were so happy to see their Mama, they kissed her back. All right, let's see here. Well, let's have a silly, silly story called I Know a Wee Piggy. This is written by Kim Norman with illustrations by one of my very, very favorites, Henry Cole. And look at the look on that piggy's face. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. But brown is not for me, he said. I think I'll add a rinse of, it's gonna rhyme. Red. Well, I know a wee piggy who wallowed in red. Hoofs to head, he wallowed in red. He wallowed in red to go with the brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. Piggy said, the red's too bright. I think I'll add a wash of white. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in white. It's not polite to wallow in white. He wallowed in white to go with the red. He wallowed in red to go with the brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. Piggy said, pale, I think. I'd be better if I add a pinch of pink. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in pink. How silly to think he needed more pink. He wallowed in pink to go with the white. He wallowed in white to go with the red. He wallowed in red to go with the brown. He Upside down, he wallowed in brown. Pink's a bore, I heard him bellow. I need about a yard of yellow. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in yellow. Slippery fellow to wallow in yellow. He wallowed in yellow to go with the pink. He wallowed in pink to go with the white. He wallowed in white to go with the red. He wallowed in red to go with the brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. Piggy squealed, I won't look back until I add a blast of black. Uh-oh, that looks like paint. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in black. Out by a shack, he wallowed in black. He wallowed in black to go with the yellow. He wallowed in yellow to go with the pink. He wallowed in pink to go with the white. He wallowed in white to go with the red. He wallowed in red to go with the brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. Piggy shouted, now I've seen that. I should get, add a glimpse of, oh, let's say it right. Now I've seen that I should add a glimpse of green. Look at all that grass that's being stuck in the paint and then the cotton candy and in the eggs and in the tomatoes and the mud. Oh, I know a wee piggy who wallowed in green. Oh, what a scene, he'll never get clean. He wallowed in green to go with the black. He wallowed in black to go with the yellow. He wallowed in yellow to go with the pink. He wallowed in pink to go with the white. He wallowed in white to go with the red. He wallowed in red to go with the brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. Piggy sighed. The green's okay, but now I need a glob of gray. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in gray. 
orange and gray. Oh, a brilliant display. Get out of his way. I know a wee piggy who didn't stop there. He wallowed in purple all over the fair. Can you see him running with that lady scarf? He added the purple to go with the gray. He added the gray to go with the green. He added the green to go with the black. He added the black to go with the yellow. He added the yellow to go with the pink. He added the pink to go with the white. He added the white to go with the red. He added the red to go with the brown. Upside down, he wallowed in brown. <gasps> and Piggy said, I'm not quite through. I won't be till I add some my favorite color, blue. And look at that, he's swimming. And what's happening to all of the colors? I'm kind of washing away. I know a wee piggy who wallowed in blue. And he won it too. He won first prize at the art show. <laughs> well, this little piggy went to market, and this little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef, and this little piggy had none. And this little piggy cried wee, 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 all the way home. Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, Shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out? Clap, clap, clap your crazies out. Clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out. Stretch, stretch. Stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Because it's time to jump. Can you jump, jump, jump your jiggles out? Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. <sighs> yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. If we were in person, I might try to do this. This is called, I'm going to give you a polar bear hug. This is written by Carolyn B. Cooney and illustrated by Tim Warns. And it's published by Zonder Kids. I'm going to give you a polar bear hug. A wintry, windy, play in the snow hug. A shivery, quivery, 40 below hug. I'm gonna give you a fox hug. A chase your tail and laugh at the gale, dance down the trail hug. I'm gonna give you a seal hug. A whiskers and nose, laugh when it snows, my toes are froze, hug. I'm going to give you a snow bunny hug. A tickly, funny, soft and sunny, sweet as honey hug. I'm going to give you a reindeer hug. A race through the snow from antlers to toe. 
Ready, set, go hug. I'm going to give you a cardinal hug. High in the sky, wave goodbye. Come on, let's fly, hug. I'm going to give you a penguin hug. A fishy grin, black and white spin, dance flipper to chin hug. I'm going to give you a walrus hug. And out on the ice flow, whoa, does the wind blow. Where did your hat go, hug? I'm going to give you a goose hug. A hold tight to that feather. It's such icy weather. Let's stick together, hug. Did you notice? Those are all her toys. And you will give me, as you sit on my knee, Hugs from the North Pole, surrounded by ice. Hugs we do once, and hugs we do twice. Hugs in cradles, cribs, and chairs. Hugs with one, and hugs in pairs. Hugs that take away all of our cares. Hugs with all those polar bears. Well, I think it's time for us to get out our bubble gum. So reach in your pocket and pull out your bubble gum. Now, if you notice, mine's just pretend bubble gum. My pocket was even pretend. But I'm going to unwrap my pretend gum and pop the gum in my mouth and chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. And then we're going to do something disgusting with it. Here we go. Pop it in your mouth. Chew it up. Is it soft and squishy? Mine is, so I'm gonna put my hand out. I'm gonna to count to three, and then we're going to spit our gum, and only our gum, right in our hands. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Clap your hand on top. And we've got sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. Remember how we get it off? Or if you're new, maybe I need to tell you. We say the word unstick, and all of a sudden, it comes right off. So let's say it together. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Stick it on your back. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your elbow. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. Did you do it? Okay, let's get back here. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. 
Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Sticky, sticky bubble gum. Let's throw it in the trash. All right. Well, I think we've got time for one more story. Hmm. I always have a couple extra, and I can never decide. I think we're going to have one about my friend Bear. There's a series of books by Bonnie Becker about Bear and a very pesky little mouse who comes to visit him. This is illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton and it's published by Candlewick Press. Everything had to be just so for Bear's bedtime. His glass of water had to sit in the exact right spot on his bedstand. His favorite pillow must be nicely fluffed. His nightcap needed to be snug on his head. And most of all, it had to be quiet. Very, very quiet. Sign says, do not disturb. Now one evening, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. Sounds almost like the story about Duck, doesn't it? When he opened the door, there stood Mouse, small, gray, and bright-eyed. He clasped a tiny suitcase in his paw. I'm here to spend the night, said Mouse with a happy wiggle of his whiskers. Oh, surely we agreed on next Tuesday, protested Bear. No, said Mouse, you most definitely said tonight. Oh, said Bear. Now, Bear had never had an overnight guest before. Guests could quite possibly mess things up and make noise. And Bear needed quiet, absolute quiet at bedtime. Even so, Bear and Mouse enjoyed an evening of checkers and warm cocoa, and soon it was time for bed. Remember... I must have absolute quiet, reminded Bear. Oh, indeed, said Mouse. So Bear set out his glass of water. He adjusted his nightcap. He fluffed his favorite pillow and climbed into bed. It was very, very quiet. He closed his eyes. Russell, Russell. Bear heard a noise. It was Mouse brushing his teeth. <clears throat> Bear cleared his throat in a reminding sort of way. <gasps> Most sorry, said Mouse. Bear closed his eyes again. <laughs> Mouse hummed while he put on his nightshirt. Papum. Absolute quiet, muttered Bear most patiently. Oh, deepest apologies, said Mouse. Crash, squeak, rattle went Mouse's bed as he hopped in. Bear jammed his pillow over his ears and gritted his teeth and closed his eyes. He was just about to drift off when... Good night, Bear, Mouse called softly. Bear tried to pretend he was asleep. Good night, Bear, Mouse called a little louder. My ears are highly sensitive, cried Bear. Really? How interesting, Mouse said. Can you hear this? Mouse mumbled into his pillow. Yes! Amazing. How about this? And Mouse said it from under his pillow. Quiet, said Bear. Mouse slipped under his blankets, crawled to the bottom of his bed and whispered, Can you hear? Silence, Bear roared. Mouse slid from his bed, went into the closet and said in the tiniest possible voice, into the farthest, darkest, 
teeniest possible corner of the closet. Surely you can't hear. Will this torment never cease? wailed Bear. Oh, sorry, Bear. Good night, Bear, whispered Mouse, tiptoeing back into bed as quiet as a, well, you know, Mouse. Bear fluffed his favorite pillow, adjusted his nightcap, and waited. But there was no more sound from Mouse. At last, it was quiet. Very, very quiet. Mouse, or Bear heard a shuffling sound. Mouse, is that you? No answer. Bear heard a crick, crick, crick on the floorboards. I know it's you. No answer. You can't fool me, Bear growled, but he didn't sound very certain. Bear heard a low, moaning voice. Mouse? Silence. Bear was sure something rustled on the floor. Mouse, he cried, wake up. Mouse stumbled out of bed, small and gray and sleepy-eyed. What is it? Well, Bear couldn't see any rustly, moany sort of thing in his room. In fact, his room looked quite like it always looked. Nothing, lied Bear, still clutching his blanket up to his chin. I must have been talking in my sleep. Bear chuckled, but it was a rather quivery chuckle. Ah said Mouse, with a glance at Bear. Could I peek under your bed? asked Mouse. Sometimes I like to check for things, you know? Well, if you insist, said Bear. Oh, nothing, said Mouse from under the bed. I suppose you'll want to check up behind the curtains, said Bear. All clear, declared Mouse a moment later. You better check the closet, offered Bear, and then you won't be the least bit nervous. Mouse came out of the closet, dusting his paws. Not a thing. Thank you, Bear. Good night. Wait, said Bear. You'll want a bedtime story, I expect, said Bear. For your nerves? For my nerves? said Mouse. Oh, indeed. I am quite shaken. And with an eager flick of his tail, he settled on Bear's favorite pillow. And Bear told him all about the adventures of the brave, strong Bear and the very frightened little Mouse. And soon, Bear began to yawn. Mouse yawned, too. Good night, Bear, said Mouse. Good night, Mouse, Bear mumbled. And then Bear began to snore loudly. But Mouse just smiled. And soon, Mouse and Bear were fast asleep. All right, well, shall we have a flannel board? I heard it's gonna be pretty cold for the next few days, and I was thinking about well, I did, went and did some grocery shopping to make sure I had lots of good stuff at home. Plenty of milk and also some soup. But you know, sometimes it's fun to make your own soup. And that's exactly what Mrs. O'Sullivan was planning to do. In fact, she was going to make stew. So I put her up a little higher so you can see her. 
and we'll get out her stew pot, put it right next to her. She's got her big stirring spoon there. Well, Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O, and in this stew she put some potatoes. So let's put some potatoes in there. E-I-E-I-O, with a munch munch here and a munch munch there, here a munch, there a munch, everywhere a munch munch, Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O, and in her stew, she put some carrots. E-I-E-I-O, with a crunch, crunch here and a crunch, crunch there. Here a crunch, there a crunch, everywhere a crunch, crunch. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew. E-I-E-I-O, and in that stew, she put some baby peas. E-I-E-I-O, with a goo-goo here and a goo-goo there. Here a goo, there a goo, everywhere a goo-goo. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew. E-I-E-I-O, and in that stew she put some corn. E-I-E-I-O, with a mm-mm here and a mm-mm there. Here, mm, there, mm, everywhere, mm, mm. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, she put some onions. Oop, get in there, onion. You may make us cry, but you taste really good. E-I-E-I-O, with a boo-hoo here and a boo-hoo there. Here a boo, there a hoo, everywhere a boo-hoo. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, this is for my mother, she put a turnip. E-I-E-I-O, with a chop, chop here and a chop, chop there. Here a chop, there a chop, everywhere a chop, chop. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, she put some good beef. E-I-E-I-O, with a choo-choo here and a choo-choo there. Here a choo, there a choo, everywhere a choo-choo. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew. E-I-E-O-I, mmm. I hope she invites me over for some. I'd love to have it. Well, I think that I didn't put our Sandra Boynton book up on my table. So will you excuse me for just a minute while I go and get it? Thank you. All right, are you ready for pajama time? This is really, I think, one of my favorites. By Sandra Boynton, and this is published by Workman Publishing. Are you in your jammies yet? Well, the moon is up and it's getting late. Let's get ready to celebrate. It's pajama time. Pull on the bottoms, put on the top, get yourself set to pajama de bop. It's pajama time. Now some are old, some are new, some are red, and some are blue. Some are fuzzy and some are not. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. Oh yes, it's pajama time. Now some are pink and some are green and some are the ugliest we've ever seen. They might be stripy or polka dot. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. Pajama to the left, pajama to the right, jamma, 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 PJ. Everybody's wearing them for dancing tonight. Jamma, 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 PJ. Now all around the room in one big line, wearing our pajamas and looking so fine. 
it's pajama time. Hop into bed, turn out the light. You can have a party in your dreams tonight. It's pajama time. Hush, hush, it's pajama time. And come back and join us next week when it's time for some bedtime stories here at Wood Library. Thanks for joining us.